Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. This week, an historic judgment on same-sex marriage. The Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law. That all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. Now, states cannot ban same-sex couples from marriage, and they must legally recognize the unions. After the ruling, numerous Republican presidential candidates gave their reaction. Mike Huckabee called on conservatives to reject judicial tyranny. Jack, recent polls show a majority of Americans agree with marriage equality, even young Republicans. Is the GOP on the wrong side of history? Well, they're on the, I, no, I think they're on the right side substantively and more importantly, more politically. Remember, these guys are playing to the base. They're coming up on 2016. What you're going to see, you'll see a, a, a love fest. You'll see who can denounce this the hardest, and you're going to see that play out in the next couple of weeks. This is a great issue for Republicans because, as Mark will tell you, in politics, you don't want the result. You want the issue. That's what a political strategist wants. Now we have the issue. We can go to our base and say, we need to confirm at least one new Supreme Court justice with a Republican president in the next term or two. We can overturn this. We can overturn health care. This is a big, it's a substantive victory for Democrats, but it's a big political victory for Republicans. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker said the only alternative left is for a constitutional amendment giving states the right to define marriage. Mark. Are you surprised that Republicans keep fighting the issue, and is this a sign that the work isn't over for liberals you and know the what? LGBT community? I hope they do. Bring it on, Jack. Bring it on, Republicans. Talk about this till the cows come home. It's not just the majority of American people who support full equality under the law. It's a supermajority. It's close to 60 percent. I hope the Republicans talk about it all the way to November and drive all the moderates home to support the Democratic nominee. Well, remember, Mark, this gets our base to the polls. Remember, politically, you know this. You're, no, you're going to be no. an elected official. This this gets the base to the there, polls, which is always number one. I think the Republican Party can't win based on evangelical social conservatives alone. There are a lot of people in the Republican Party who are socially liberal and fiscally conservative. And if you want to force them into our camp, Jack, true. we're happy to that's have them. That's true. But there's a lot of data. We don't know where, for instance, we don't know where the Hispanic community is on this. The Hispanic community is very conservative on social issues. You're presuming, you're presuming that Hispanics support this decision. We don't have enough polling to draw that conclusion. It, it won't. It won't drive them away from the Democratic Party because we care about them for other reasons. We we help the Hispanic community that are struggling for economic reasons and immigration law and so forth. This is an issue that actually is driving young people away from your party, Jack. I say keep talking about it. Well, Mark, we before we go on, you're not new to this issue either. You've no. been, you've been tell, give us a quick background. I sure, I actually uh, have been involved in marriage equality movement since 1999 when I lived in California. I wrote one of the first laws in the country to get full marriage equality to gay and lesbian couples, and I formed Marriage Equality California. In fact, I did uh, uh, four of us did the first Valentine's Day protests across the country. So this today, today's Supreme Court opinion, and I was at the Supreme Court. I got the opinion today. is really the culmination of, of a lot of my life's work. I'm very proud of today. Well, it's been a busy week for the Supremes also a landmark decision, court decision on Obamacare. After more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, after multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. In a surprise 63 decision, the court upheld a subsidy provision for millions of Americans. Jack, are the Republicans going to finally just say enough's enough? We're going to oh, give I up don't on think this? So. I, no, once again, Morris, I think this is only the beginning. I think it rallies the base. And this is an issue. You know, Mark has a good point in that, in that moderates and soccer moms, sure, they feel that way on gay issues. But on health care, the moderates are with us. We can take this. This is a, a big victory for our base. This is a big victory uh, with moderates in 2016. The real the real issue here is that John Roberts, and this is the beginning of politics 2016, John Roberts has essentially betrayed his oath of office. He told George Bush he was a conservative. He told
told the U.S. Senate he was a conservative. He told the American people he was a conservative. And now he has gone out of his way not once but twice to uphold up Obamacare, the first time uh, somehow conceptualizing it as a tax, uh, this time writing, a, uh, writing for the majority in an opinion I thought that made no legal sense. But once again, I think it's a big win for the right. Mark, what does this do for Obama's legacy now? I think it cements it. I think, uh, first of all, the Supreme Court opinion was basically reading the law the way it was intended to be written. And right now, you've got tens of millions of Americans who will lose their health care if the Republicans try to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, which they call Obamacare. At this point, you have a constituency that very much wants to keep their health care. And just like the Republicans tried in 1936 to get rid of Social Security, it Mark, failed do you know miserably. How bad this is? I don't think you know People how bad this is. People are going to like Do you know that you can only buy health insurance? I actually had to buy health insurance for an employee. you know that you can only buy health insurance? insurance at certain times of the year for certain kinds of people. That to me sounds like Stalin's Russia. I don't think you have a sense of how bad this is. The, the people, the range of people who benefit from this is very small. You talk about tens Jack, of millions. Jack, it's anyone You've with a pre-existing condition. You've got 250 million people who are suffering under this law. It's anyone with a pre-existing condition. It's anyone that has a child under 26. It's anyone that gets Medicare and closes the, the, the loophole. It's anyone that earns under 150% the poverty wage. It's a lot of people, Jack. It's tens of millions of Americans that benefit. They're not going to want to give up their health care. Republican presidential candidates blasted the Supreme Court ruling and made campaign promises to remove the law if elected. Jack, could running on an anti-ACA platform be effective for your party? I think it can be very effective. Again, it's effective with both the base and with the soccer moms and with the moderates. I think we, we saw it work in 2010. We saw it work in 2014. It's worked twice like a charm. It had a good effect in 2012, but I think with Romney, frankly, we had a weak candidate and a weak campaign. I think it will be the centerpiece of a lot of 2016, uh, of a lot of the 2016 effort for Republicans, Morris. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton applauded the decision. Mark, from a 2016 standpoint, how will this impact her campaign? I think it's going to help her very much. Hillary Clinton has always supported health care. I mean, obviously, she's been known for that for more than 20 years. Her proposal was not that different from President Obama's. In fact, the eventual proposal was closer to her dream than even what President Obama said when he ran against her in 2008. I think this is a real victory for the Democratic Party. And Jack may be right about off-year elections, but in presidential elections, Democrats come out in swarms, and, and this will help her legacy. The Clinton cap did take some criticism this week. During a campaign stop near Ferguson, Missouri, Hillary said all lives matter while delivering a speech at a black church. The phrase has been used to push back against the popular hashtag Black Lives Matter. Mark, what's your take? Did Hillary misstep here? I don't think so. People need to understand the difference. If you say black lives matter and someone comes back and says all lives matter, that's not good. That suggests that people don't understand that black lives are not taken seriously enough in America. Of course all lives matter, but black lives have unfortunately in the past well, not been respected once enough. Once again, what, what she, you're did, what she did, Let me finish, Jack. What she did was she was talking about her mother. She wasn't talking about you black will lives. You see what you will and see, she was talking about her Hillary mother Clinton. who was a poor person and was struggling. She has so to it was go appropriate one way. In that context. Context. She's right. got to go one way in the primary and the other way in the general. You're going to see her pander to a lot of extremists in the primary. The Democratic Party on the left goes way out there on all of these issues. She has to go way out there, and then she has to race back toward the center. Health care is a good example of that. She will associate herself with Obama and associate herself with the ACA and the Health Reform Act in the primary. But as she gets into the general, you mark my word, she will denounce it, and she will run away from Obama. What does it have to do with All Lives Matter, Jack? Well, Well, it's a good point. <laughs> So she, she, she's, you're saying she's pandering now and she's going to kind of center up and fine tune the message before the election. Of course, of course. There's pandering on all kinds of issues, on issues of the environment, on issues of race, on issues of gay, on issues of health care. These she's are gonna, issues she's that Hillary as far in. left as she can possibly move. All right, before we go, let's talk about Obama's heckler. During an LGBT event at the White House, the president was interrupted. No, 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 yeah, l l listen, you're in my house. <laughs> All right. Before having the heckler removed, Obama told the protester, as you heard, you're in my house. It's not respectful. Jack, how did you think the president handled himself? Oh, I think there's a better way to do it. When you say it's not, I, I saw that, I've seen that clip uh, many times, Morris. I think it's not his house. And that's something to remember. I think the, the president definitely has an imperial view of himself and the presidency. It's not his house, it's the people's house. And I think that's something that's gotten lost. I think it's lost on Obama.
Mark? I don't know of any Republican candidate that would handle a heckler any differently from Obama. In fact, Obama often uh, talks to hecklers more than Republican presidents have. I think he handled it fine, and I think the heckler got uh, her issue out as well, so win-win. All right, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Morris.